When we introduced the concept of electromagnetic radiation, we were looking at those questions that we had for homework. We said that the speed of EMR, whatever the type, is the same. It's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum. It actually slows down when it travels through air or water or glass or anything else, but in a vacuum, it's 3 times 10 to the 8 for any kind. How did we find out that speed? Like, where do we get that speed from? Over the years, there's been thousands of experiments done that have given us various values, some good, some bad, for the speed of light. We're going to talk about a couple of them today at, at opposite ends of the spectrum. One is going to be an experiment that gave us a really poor value for the speed of light, and one is going to be one that gives us a, a really good value for the speed of light. The first one that we're going to talk about is Galileo. Galileo is pretty famous, eh? We all know who Galileo is. Galileo must have had a really good experiment to measure the speed of light. He didn't, actually. He didn't. It didn't work out at all. It was logical, but it didn't work out at all. Here's what Galileo did. Galileo had two hills a kilometer apart. On the top of the first hill was Galileo with a little lantern. He had a lantern that you could light with a, with a match or whatever he used to light it, whatever he used to create the flame, like an oil lamp or something like that. It was covered up with a sheet or some kind of fabric. And on the other hill, a kilometer away, was his assistant that also had a lamp or a lantern that was covered up. Now, Galileo, with some kind of device used to measure time, I'm not sure exactly what he would have used because he wouldn't have been using his iPhone, or even a stopwatch. Yeah, they didn't have that app back then, that's right. Yeah. Some way of measuring time, he would have uncovered his lantern, started his stopwatch, and then his assistant on the other hill, kilometer A, would have uncovered his lantern when he saw the light from Galileo's lantern, and then Galileo would have stopped his, his stopwatch when he saw the light from his assistants. So, basically, Galileo's light travels from him to his assistant. His assistant's light travels back here. That's a total distance of two kilometers and a total time of, well, whatever Galileo measured it to be. Do the math. The math's easy. The only problem is it gives me a really, really poor value for the speed of light. How come? Like the reaction time, right. How fast does light travel? Travel two kilometers? I'm not sure what the value is, like how exactly how fast it is, but it's ridiculously fast. Light will travel 25 to 30 return trips across Canada. That is, if it could travel that far, keep bouncing back and forth, and if we ignored the curvature of the Earth, it could go from, say, Halifax to Victoria and back again. It would do that. 25 to 30 times in one second. That's how fast light travels. So how long does it take to travel two kilometers? I'm not sure exactly, but it's not very much time. Human reaction time is much, much greater. So even if Galileo did manage to get a number that was somewhere remotely close to 3 times 10 to the 8, it wouldn't have meant anything because it would have been pure luck that he got it, right? Not through good experimental design. So. We're going to say that Galileo and his assistant stood on these hills of Kilometer Park. Galileo uncovers his light. His assistant uncovers his light. Light goes back and forth, right? Light goes from Galileo to, assist, to his assistant and then back from his assistant back to Galileo. Galileo measures the time. And when he measures the time, got the distance, two kilometers, measures the speed uses the equation V equals D over T to find the speed. I'm not even going to write a number down for that, though, because it was way off. V equals D over T equals way off. Why does it equal way off? Because of reaction time. So, how do we get a better value for the speed of light? Well, there's lots of ways that we can get better values for the speed of light, but here's one way. A guy named Nicholson performed an experiment 
Well, here's one of his experiments. There was actually more experiments performed by Michelson, but we're going to describe one of them, the one that we have to know for Physics 30. We'll call it the rotating mirror experiment. The rotating mirror experiment involves an eight-sided an eight-sided object with a mirror on each face, like this, that will rotate. So you got a mirror on each side, and then the mirror will rotate like this. We can spin it at whatever frequency we want to spin it at. Let's stop it for a second. Let's make that, make that mirror just stationary. And then let's look at the rest of the setup here. On one mountain, we call it Mount Wilson, we have a light. It's not going to be an electric light here, but whatever, whatever the light source is. Okay, we shine a little flash of that light towards this eight-sided mirror, and it reflects off of that eight-sided mirror to, to a mountain 35 kilometers away called Mount San Antonio. Now, Mount San Antonio has a mirror on it as well. Sometimes it's shown as a flat mirror. Sometimes it's shown as a curved mirror. It doesn't really matter so much for our purposes. Bottom line is light would go from this light to that, that flat side of the mirror right there, reflect like this, reflect off of a mirror down at Mount San Antonio, back off of this side, and get observed by the observer. That's the basic setup here, but we don't have any measurements yet to give us the speed of light. This is just the basic setup of, of what's happening here. Now what I want to do, though, is assume that this light, or this mirror, I should say, is rotating. Let's say it's rotating in such a way that the light reflects still off of side four. So we shine this flash of light, the light reflects this way, the way that it, the way that it did before off of side four. The only problem here is that during the time the light takes to go from here, from side four, down to Mount San Antonio and back again, the, the mirror isn't in the same position. The mirror is now right here. So now this light reflects up here and doesn't get observed by the observer. So it hasn't rotated. By, by rotating, it threw the direction of the reflection off, and the light no longer gets observed. If we rotate it a bit more, then what's going to happen? Look, we rotate it a bit more. Oh, now it's hitting side 5, and maybe the light comes down like this now. It still doesn't get observed by the observer. So, in the first case that I just showed you, it hadn't been rotated enough during the time that it took the light to go from one mountain to the other and back again. In the second case, it rotated too much to go from one mountain to the other and back again in that time. So what do we got to do? Well, we got to make sure that if the mirror was like this, when the light first reflected off of side four, and if it's rotating, we got to make sure that it's rotated exactly one-eighth of a rotation during the time that it took the light to travel from position A to position B to position C. Does that make sense? If it's rotated exactly one-eighth of a rotation, then this light is now going to reflect and get observed by the observer. Is that okay? Right? If it's, reflect, or it's rotated a little bit less than that, the light doesn't get reflected in the right spot. A little bit more than that, the light doesn't get reflected in the right spot. It has to be exactly one-eighth of a rotation in order for the light to get observed by the observer. So, this is the thing. We turn this thing on, start spinning, no light detected. We crank up the frequency a little bit, no light detected. We crank up the frequency a little bit. Oh, all of a sudden we see it at the observer. We crank it up a little bit more, oh, it's gone again. We want to stop, we want to record the frequency at which it gets observed by the observer. That's our frequency. Because that's, because that represents the time that it took for the light to go from A to B to C again. The time for one eighth of a rotation is the time that it took the light to travel that distance. Does that make sense? Well now we can actually find the speed of light. We can use the equation V equals D over T to solve for the speed of light. The D in this case would be what? 70 kilometers or 70,000 meters. The T, well, we don't know the T yet, but we do know that it's the time for one-eighth of a rotation, right? The time that it took to go from here to here back to here is the time that it took the, 
the mirror to rotate from here to here. So that t is a time for one eighth of a rotation. Now, we can, given the frequency of this rotating mirror, which is usually somewhere in the 10 to the 2, the hundreds range, usually, given that frequency, we can calculate the time for one complete rotation, the period. And given the period, we can? Divide. Good. Divide by 8 to get the time for one-eighth of a rotation, which is the time that it took the light to go from A to B to C. And then we can divide the distance from A to B to C by the time from A to B to C and get the speed. And that gives us a remarkably good speed of light. Now, our distance here is still small, right? It's a lot bigger than a kilometer, but it's still, like, compared to distance across Canada and the idea that light takes 25, 30 return trips across Canada in one second, like, this distance is still ridiculously small. W like, what makes this experiment so much better than the last one? Like, the distance, sure, 35 times better. But still, like, that's, that's still ridiculously small. What is it that makes this experiment so much better than the last one? We've completely reduced human reaction time. Like, there is no human reaction time involved here. Now, you may be off a little bit on the frequency of the mirror. Like, say it's 600, and you measured it to be 670. Or, sorry, yeah, 570, let's say. Well, you're 5% off on the frequency of the mirror, right? Well, then you're going to be 5% off on the speed of light. But that's a lot better than the thousands of percent off you were uh, when you did the Galileo's experiment, right? You're not going to be off by factors of thousands in the frequency of the rotating mirror. But a little bit. But you're off by factors of thousands or millions when we, when we got our reaction time involved. All right? Make some sense? OK. All right, let's solve a problem then involving this. Uh, problem number one says a set of eight rotating mirrors in a Michelson experiment. Now, sometimes we see questions where it's not eight sides. Sometimes we see questions where it's maybe 16 sides. Changes things ever so slightly, but the basic recipe that we use to solve this problem is the same. But do pay attention to how many sides of the mirror it is, because it is important. Rotates at a frequency of 600 hertz, which is pretty typical. The rotating mirrors are placed 35 kilometers from a curved mirror on a second hill, Mount San Antonio. Determine the speed of light obtained from this experiment. There is a recipe for solving this problem. So often in Physics 30, we get conceptually difficult questions, questions that we have to think a lot about. I'm not suggesting these questions are easy, but I am suggesting that once you know how to do it, you know how to do it. Like it's no, there's no tricks to them for the most part. It's here's the recipe, do it. Now, I use that term recipe. When you're baking cookies, you keep the recipe beside you, at least when you're learning to bake those cookies. So make sure, because this is a, a good, solid recipe, make sure that when you're working on problems in a few minutes, you keep this example beside you. Copy it down and keep it beside you, because it will be helpful, I promise, since all the questions are pretty much the same. OK. Here's what I want you to do every single time. Every single time you get one of these questions. And by the way, the odds of you getting one of these questions are quite high uh, on your exam. They usually end up appearing on the exam. Start with this equation, V equals D over T or delta D over delta T. And this equation, T is equal to 1 over F. What does this little t represent again? Little t represents the little time, the smallest time, the time for 1 eighth of a rotation. Big T stands for, well, that's the big time, which is the time for, yeah, it's the period or one complete rotation. Now, when you solve it, when you, you're going to plug numbers in here now and solve for something. I'll tell you that what you solve for is almost always going to be time. That's the first thing you're going to get. It's not what you're looking for, but it's the first thing you're going to get, either little t or big T. And the one that you get is not going to be the one that you actually end up wanting. That's okay. Just solve for whatever you can solve for. Get whatever time comes out of it, and then get the other one from it. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do in this particular question. I'm looking for the speed. Don't know what it is. The distance, I know it's 35 there, 35 back, 70,000 meters. Divide it by the time for one-eighth of rotation. I don't know what that is, so I move on. 
I sub numbers in, didn't get an answer, move on. The time for one complete rotation is 1 over the frequency. The frequency is 600 hertz. All right, now I can solve for this value. The time for one complete rotation I'm going to say 600, 1 over 600 is 0 0.00166677 seconds. All right, remember what I said a minute ago? You're probably going to get a time first. And remember what I said about that time? It's not the one you want. I just got the time for one complete rotation. So let's get the other one, the time for one-eighth of a rotation. How? Divide it by 8. By the way, if you had to solve for a little t first, we don't want it. We'd want the big t, right? How would we get big t from little t? Multiply by 8. Good. To go from big to small, you divide. To go from small to big, you multiply. So let's do this. Let's take this number. Let's divide it by 8. The time for 1 eighth of rotation is 2.0833 times 10 to the minus 4. Now let's turn around and sub that number into here. Let's, uh, let's see, 70,000 divided by 3.36 times 10 to the 8. Now, I told you before that you can't have a speed faster than 3 times 10 to the 8, right? Now, you guys know from, well, when we do experiments, not for the speed of light per se, but sometimes what works out in practice with experimental data doesn't actually agree with what will theoretically happen, right? So if we've got, like in this case, so-called experimental data, it's cooked experimental data here, but still call it experimental data, we may get an answer that isn't possible, right? You're not going to get 3 times 10 to the 10, but 3.36 times 10 to the 8, that's actually not that far off of 3 times 10 to the 8. So with real experimental data, something like that would be absolutely be possible. We know it would be wrong because it's bigger than 3 times 10 to the 8, but it's still fairly close. Right? Does that make some sense? So always, always write down this equation and this equation and then get either this or this. And from that or that, determine the other one. If you get little t, get big t by multiplying by 8 or by 16, or however many sides of the mirror there are. Get big T, then divide by 8 to get little t, and then solve for you're looking for. Done. All right, the questions I'd like you to work on are from two places. Worksheet number 14. There's only three questions on worksheet number 14. In addition to that, there's some practice problems on page 650. There's three questions on that as well. Those are going to be homework, but you've also got what, 22 minutes to work on them right now, so you got a good chance of actually finishing those up. There will be uh, a practice question set uh, up in the next uh, 10 minutes as well, not on this stuff, but on the stuff that, was, uh, that we had looked at uh, yesterday with the electromagnetic radiation, right? So all that's going to be homework, but you do have 20 minutes to, to get a good head start on that now.